Mr. Speedy. Well, Tana, I, uh, I, I was really looking forward to coming in and seeing this movie because I loved Road Warrior. And then to come in and see this film, and I was excited about that. And very excited about seeing you again. The last time we talked, uh, we were seated in your suite <laughs> at the Fairmont Hotel in Dallas. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, you tell me you saw the movie last night for the first time. All right, <laughs> when you saw Tina Turner up there in Cinemascope, tell me. Well, you get sort of embarrassed when you first see it, you know, because it's not like as if we prepared ourselves, you know, on, on a personal level. It's like you're acting and, you know, you've been wearing, wearing the personality of, of a different character. You know? So you become a little bit embarrassed because it's, you're playing someone else. It's the ghost of someone else that you're behind there. So I was sort of squeezing onto the seat and then I had to sort of relax to really remind myself that it's acting. This is what it is, you know. And um, I was critical. But then in the end, I was proud. Did, did your role come off the way that you thought it would, or, you know, almost always you shoot more stuff than is used? Was right. very much cut out? Quite a bit, uh, because we did have a, a timing problem. A lot of the, the, the footage of the kids in the desert and my part had to be taken out. But basically the main things, the jump into Thunderdome and the in the penthouse and the, the train and the chase was all there. And so uh, the exciting end of it came, which was important to me. They didn't cut your favorite scene. They didn't cut my favorite scene, no. <laughs> <laughs> have to learn all the proper terms now. <laughs> um, this had to be, uh, in many respects, a very uncomfortable movie. And that's probably the understatement of the day, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, tell me about that costume. Now, it looks like it's made of chicken wire and God knows what else. Yeah. They said, the uh, designer said that it was uh, butcher's aprons. Underneath the uh, the framework for the shoulders and all was a dog muscle, the muscle for the for the dogs and the wire all wired together to make the shoulders and and it would break and the, this they would cut into the body. I mean it's, uh, the one take when you're really moving or something that you can't you wouldn't dare go ouch because you're trying to get the take you know. So I had all kinds of little cuts. It was a little tapes here and there, and it weighed seventy nine pounds. Standing few hours on that, you can imagine feet were badly swollen, but I had massage every night and hot baths and I was determined I didn't care if it killed me. I was going to wear that dress and I was going to play that part. <laughs> <laughs> and then the extremes of heat and cold. Oh, yes. Now the thing would get hot and it must be like in an oven, isn't well, it? Well, what they did for me, it was, it was cold when I first arrived because summer was just coming in and they had a rainy season. So she made a, a cape for me to keep me warm. But one side was uh, one color and the other side was a different color. And then when we would go to, which had a lot to do with keeping warm, and then we went to the sun, they reversed it and it re re reflected differently. So because the metal was, uh, uh, how do you call it, attracting the sun, which even if, if it was just hitting under my shoes, it would, you know, accentuate. I mean, how do you call it? No, it was called accentuate. What is it called? When you're wearing metal, if the sun hits one area, the whole thing is, 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 is it heated conducts up. conducts the heat. It conducts the heat, that's yeah. right. So she made a cape for me to sort of uh, keep it all under control there, and I had an umbrella to keep me out of the sun, so, but it was still hot. <laughs> but between breaks, immediately it came off. And you know, I've often wondered, and now I know what happened to Princess Leia's buns. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Turner has. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was sort of made that way, you know. <laughs> I've been teased about that quite often today. So. <laughs> uh, it looks great. It looks great. All right, now then, the big question. <laughs> what is it like to be around Mel Gibson? Well, when I first saw Mel, I was really excited because he, he was um, as stimulating to see off screen as he was on and um, a bit shy. Yeah, um, but then as, as the time went on, we became friends, you know, and we would laugh and play on the set and we got to know each other, but it was really quite exciting. And dif differently, you'd like to be that close, you know. He's real good looking, you know. I you already know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me I noticed <laughs> uh, Do you remember the very first thing you said to him? Or Hi, I said as if I knew him. George had introduced me to all the other characters and that. For some reason, Mel was at the end of the line, and, and then he says, and it's Mel Gibson, and George is very formal, you know, and I, and I turned, and there he was, and it was like knowing immediately who he was, and I felt as if I had known him forever, because I was watching him on screen, and I said, hi, and then I went, oh, you know, nice to meet you, and he went, hi, so that made it, oh, thank God, he's friendly, you know, so he, is, he was really quite nice. Were you disappointed that you didn't have a love scene with him? No, I was glad I didn't. I'm a bit shy about love scenes, 
you know, I have to sort of be uh, attracted to someone, I think, before I could actually uh, play with a scene like that, you know, and I actually didn't feel that way about Mel, as cute as he was, I wasn't sensuously attracted to him, but I didn't want a love scene. I, I really don't want love scenes right now, I want to just sort of be, you know, villains. And... One quick last question, Tina, before we run out of time. 1984-85 just has to be the best time in life. Best year of my entire life, yes. I'm becoming happy. I'm closer to what I, I have this is for me than I've ever been my entire life. Waking up and just being totally surrounded with all the things that I want and I dreamed. It's wonderful. And you have other films coming on, do you know? There is one for a female hero right now that we are doing. It's really quite a for now, but we might have to iron out some of the kinks, but I think I'm going to take it. And you're on tour? Yes, I'm doing um, an American tour. It starts in July. Oh, July 22nd moves well into December. Is Dallas on the tour? Of course. Can I see you then? Absolutely. Can I talk with you? Uh, certainly. All right, we've got a date. <laughs> Tina, it's always fun to be with you. Thank you, you much. It's good to see you. Light again. up the light, the whole sky. <laughs> Thanks. A lot. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Just